2014 is here, and one of the things that I like doing every year at the beginning of a new year is taking a look at some of the individuals that we should watch as wrestling fans for the year to come. And I'm doing it 14 to watch between WWE and TNA in 2014. More WWE people than TNA people, but there are a few on there. One of the rules I had, even usually, even though I made an exception here in this case for one guy in TNA, is that I don't want anybody that's been a world champion. Uh, there was actually a couple of uh, WWE divas on this list as well. But I like to focus on those guys trying to predict who could be the next big thing or who could be the next big star, what have you. And you know, at the end of the year, I'll probably write on a few of them and I'll probably be wrong on a few of them. That's how it goes usually. So I'm just going to go 14 to 1, talk a little bit about each. Number 14, Rockstar Spud. I like what they're doing with him in TNA. He's developing a character. He's developing personality. He's developing an on-screen persona. Um, this is a guy that was the winner of the British Boot Camp. And even though you look at him, he's a very small guy. He doesn't have to be a huge guy to become a big player in the X Division. But I love the way he's being featured right now. And I think he's somebody before the end of the year could possibly get an X Division title shot. Number three, Antonio Cesaro. To me, this guy screams baby face. It has it written all over him, especially with that classic baby face move, the Cesaro swing. It's about the WWE coming to their senses and stop fighting against the grain and going with something and saying this guy could be a decent star as a baby face, and he really could. Whether or not he could be a main event baby face, I don't know yet. Could he be a very credible mid-card babyface that people would like to watch? Absolutely. He's got a look. He can go in the ring. And he's got a unique kind of style, a much more physical type of, you know, punching, brawling style than you see out of a lot of the wrestlers and the sports entertainers, whatever, in the WWE today. Number 12 is Seth Rollins. And I kind of, on one hand, feel I maybe have him a bit low on the list because even myself sometimes I look at Seth Rollins and I think maybe I underrate him a little bit or I look at him and I am guilty of this saying, oh, the internet fans love him because he wrestled for fucking ROH, so he's automatically overrated. But Seth Rollins has gotten a lot better and he does have a quality to him where I think he could become a decent sized star. I think it could potentially take a little more work with him than it would, let's say, with an Ambrose or Roman Reigns, but when I see Seth Rollins, I see a guy that could be like a Jeff Hardy, and for some reason, that's become an insult, or that's a knock against the guy. Ladies and gentlemen, let me emphasize once again, when I am saying he could be like a Jeff Hardy type, that is meant as a compliment. Jeff Hardy was once a very big star, perhaps second only to John Cena in terms of being the most over babyface in the WWE. That's rarefied air. Seth Rollins, I bet if you asked him wish is and wishes that he could have a career like Jeff Hardy minus the um, personal issues and baggage, etc. Number 11, Summer Rae, the first of the two divas on this list. You know, she's being uh, grouped with Fandango, has been for a number of months and continues to be so. She's doing some work down at NXT. They make it a point to put her in some of these divas matches and showcase her a little bit. She's very talented. And she has that long leg blonde look that Vince McMahon and the WWE get chubbers over. She could get pushed in 2014, and she could be somebody new in the Divas scene in the Divas title picture. Excuse me, number 10, Ethan Carter III. You take a WWE reject and Derek Bateman, align him with Dixie Carter, and say that he's her nephew, and you've got somebody that's rising quickly within TNA. He's a guy that they're featuring every week on television. He's a guy that they're pushing every week on television. And as a result, it would not surprise me at all to see him maybe be television champ by the end of the year. And who knows? You put him into a feud with Sting where he eventually maybe goes over on Sting. Who knows what they could end up doing with him and how far they're going to push him this year. Uh, number nine, Paige from NXT. This is the other diva I think we need to watch. You know, I'm sure a lot of the internet crowd would absolutely love to see a feud between Paige and AJ Lee. The best thing about her is, is that she comes from a wrestling family, but she's also very young. So you could potentially have her for a lot of years, a lot of years. The best is only yet to come with her. I would expect at some point in 2014, maybe in the middle of the year, that we'll see her up on the active roster and that you would push her into an important spot right away because she's a lot different than most of the other divas that you have. Number eight, Gunner in TNA. You know, he's a guy that definitely has that look. He can go at least a little bit in the ring. 
And for a company like TNA that desperately needs to create new stars or do the best they can to create new stars in 2014, a Viking-looking mountain man like Gunner to me would seem to jump out as being a guy that this company needs to feature. There's a reason they had him win that feast or fired briefcase because somebody in that company likes him. Somebody in that company thinks that he can do big things. Number seven, Luke Harper from the Wyatt family. I'm not really big on Eric Rowan. I don't really see that much to him yet. Again, I could be wrong. Down the road, we'll see. But I could look at Luke Harper, and I could say, you know, there are certain things that he does that I like. There are certain things that stand out. I don't know if he has that fully tangible it factor yet. I don't know if I've seen that yet. But could I see a guy that as 2014 goes along, he continues to improve and he gets better and he grows as a WWE-style performer? And maybe before the end of the year, they split off him from Bray Wyatt and they have a feud where they do some nice business? That could very possibly be the case. Number six, Dean Ambrose. You know, when I see him a lot, he reminds me quite a bit of Roddy Roddy Piper. That's what I see when I see a guy like Dean Ambrose. Not the biggest, not the strongest, but he has... That kind of herky-jerky in-ring style, but he's really good from a psychological standpoint on the mic. I think that he's a guy that the WWE realizes they can do some good business with, that he could potentially be one of the guys in the main event scene, not necessarily maybe the top guy. But 2014, you could probably either see one or two things as they eventually break the shield apart. Either they're going to push Dean Ambrose on his own and try and make him a single star, or they'll stick him in the mid card where he sits in hell for two to three years, and then everybody wonders what the hell's going on. Why can't you figure out something better to do with Dean Ambrose? See Wade Barrett. See The Miz. See Kofi Kingston, and so on, and so on, and so on. Number five, Big E Langston. I hope that Triple H and the WWE realize that at some point in time, they do have a very sizable black fan base and as a result every once in a while i am sure that those black fans myself included would love to see somebody of their own to cheer for b langston has that traditional wwe main event look and apparently he's good friends with john cena behind the scenes and cena is a very big backer of his as long as he's not of course challenging and threatening cena spot so it would not surprise me at all to see Biggie Langston get a run at the world title sometime in 2014. Number four is Cody Rhodes. You would think with some of the other guys that have been world champion in the company, you know, namely I'll point out like a Dolph Ziggler's been a two-time world heavyweight champion. You'd have thought Cody Rhodes would have been a world champion at least once by now. You'd have to assume at some point they're going to split off him and Gold Dust, and they're going to emphasize Cody Rhodes as the year goes along. I think there's a definite possibility that he wins money in the bank in July, but we'll see. Number three is Magnus. This, to me, needs to be the guy that TNA puts the eggs in his basket, and they sit there and look at him and say, we're going to do everything we can to make him a big international star for us and make him the centerpiece of this company in 2014. He's like 26, 27 years old, I think. He speaks with an accent, so that stands out. He appeals to an international audience as well as a domestic audience, being a Brit. He has a decent look. He can go okay in the ring. He's not phenomenal, but he doesn't necessarily have to be phenomenal if he brings enough other things to the table. And I think he's relatively good at delivering his message on the mic. He's one of those individuals that has me still watching TNA. I'm a Magnus fan, and I can't wait to see what they do with him in the next 12 months. Number two is Bray Wyatt. When you look at Bray Wyatt, this is Waylon Mercy done right. This is a guy that is very off the wall. He's crazy, he's psychotic, he's so many different things. You see elements of The Undertaker and Kane and Jake the Snake Roberts and, like I said before, Waylon Mercy kind of all rolled up into this character, and that's a good thing. Bray Wyatt is a guy that has that main event size. Like, you know, I can emphasize it so many times that WWE does still like that, even though they feature guys that are smaller like Punk and Daniel Bryan. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. They ultimately love to default to the guys that are 260, 270 pounds and above, and Bray Wyatt definitely fits into that category. You, know, you look at him, when you look at the Bray Wyatt character, he, to me, has that it factor. I don't know if the WWE fully realizes that yet, and maybe they do. I'll give them some credit. Maybe they do. It's going to be very curious to see with a guy like Bray Wyatt, who could be a different type of performer, a different type of top guy, if the WWE is actually going to follow through and go all the way with it and continue to put him in things that are interesting and captivating, or are they just going to have him kind of toil around and you know engage in a bunch of foreplay but not do any real fucking. But the number one guy to watch for me in WWE in 2014 has to be Roman Reigns. 
you know, you already hear the buzz and the hubbub about Roman Reigns being the guy to watch, and there's entertaining talk of him potentially winning the Royal Rumble. I doubt that, but when you look at him, they're starting to feature him in the Shield in a different way. And you could hear the crowd the other week sitting there and chanting for him and chanting his name. When he's supposed to be a part of a heel stable, he's getting a babyface pop, a babyface reaction. He has that look. He's very young. He comes from a great wrestling bloodline. The ladies think he's sexy as shit, including my lady and Summer. They both go goo-goo for reins. They want to pull his hair and play with his muscles and all this other shit. But he has kind of that presence. And again, just like Bray Wyatt, I think he has that type of tangible it factor where it's tangible because you could sense it and feel it, but sometimes you can't necessarily describe it. But he also has an impressive finisher with that spear. It's not just a regular run-of-the-mill spear. His spear is incredibly impressive. It's impactful. And that is the type of babyface finisher that when you're a top guy can generate a huge reaction. I'm curious to hear and see who you guys think are the ones to watch in WWE and TNA in 2014. So feel free to let me know in the comments section down below.